give honor to to God, amen, who woke us all up this morning, amen, and we give honor to our pastor, amen, and our first lady, amen, who are doing a tremendous job here at Mount Moriah, amen, and I thank Pastor Harper for allowing me this preaching moment, amen, as we come before you this morning, the last Sunday before Christmas, amen, and we give honor to all of these preachers, Evangelist Jackson, Reverend Thurman Lovelace, Reverend Levy, amen, and to uh, Pastor Shirley Whitfield, and, and to Minister Murdine Levy, amen, and, and last but not least, amen, to my lovely wife, amen. the officers, and to all of you God's children. Amen. 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 It's just good yeah, yeah. to be in the house. Amen. I looked up there and I seen Tussa holding down the door. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. I said, look at me. <laughs> Amen. So I know we come to have a good time. Amen. Amen. I know I came to have a good time. And God has been blessing all week long. Yeah. Amen. Been working hard, but God said, I'm still God. Amen. I still want to praise. I still want to worship. Don't get tired of me. I done gave you energy all week long. So don't get sluggish. Don't be this month. Amen. Oh, yes. If you would just go with me to the book of Luke. Chapter 2. Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. Amen. We just want to talk about just a little while, do you have room for Jesus? Amen. Amen. Do you have room for Jesus? In the midst of this pandemic in 2020, and everything seems to be upside down and folks uh, don't really know what to do, whether to wear their mask or not wear their mask. Do you have any room for God, a man that is able to say peace? Be still in the midst of all of your storms. Whatever you're going through, every day is Christmas with you. Yes, amen. If you would, if we look at the text, can you see the nativity scene this morning? Mary and Joseph and a wooden manger before them in which the baby Jesus is lying. Around them are shepherds with their canes and with their sheep beside them. This scene touches our hearts. But what our sanitized scene does not present is the fact that the stable would be, I've been dirty, yeah. smelly, 
Our Lord and Savior was actually laid in a feeding trough for animals. Can you imagine? You know what animals like to do in stables. Huh? And you can smell the odor before you get into the stable. Mm. Can you imagine this cold, dirty, smelly stable of place mothers would want to be born in, let alone to give birth in? Mm. Imagine any, any hospital in Spectre from UAMS, Baptist out of Hard Hospital, they would have condemned this place. I believe even Dr. Fauci would have said, oh no, thank you, boy. This is just unsanitary. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh yes, they would have condemned it, closed it down. But that is not the major thing that is wrong. The thing that is wrong is that baby Jesus should not be in the stable in the first place. Yeah. Let's look at the first point I want to talk about is what is wrong with this scene? Jesus doesn't belong there. After all, he is the eternal God, the second person of the Godhead. Yeah. The one who rules over all. We might argue that he should not even have come into our sinful world yeah. at all. Amen. But that was his choice. Yeah. Because of his great love for us. I thank God that he loved us so much. Scripture says, but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. But since he did come, should he not at least have been born in a place that would be represent who he is? Yeah. In the end of in the raw palace, or in a, a, a raw suite, a presidential suite, somewhere of that nature. Mm -hmm. Something seemed very wrong about God being born in a state. God, I believe, could have done something about it. Oh, yes, he could have arranged things a little differently. After all, he just has to say a word. And the world comes into being. Huh? Yeah. The same God said, let there be light. And yeah. That was light. Yeah. The same God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. Yeah. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament. Yeah. From the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. Yeah. With the word he could have made better arrangements. Yeah. But God has a plan, Pastor. Yeah. God has a plan. Luke tells us why Jesus was born in a stable. Huh? Yeah. Because there was no room yeah. in the end. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Secondly, secondly, why did God allow this? I won't be before you very long. I tell you, God had a plan. Yeah. It had been prophesied in Micah 5 and 2, but thou Bethlehem Ephraim, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, yeah. whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. In the text in Luke Two and one part A. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Yeah. Verse 3, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. Yeah. A Roman census was taken to a military conscription or tax collection. Yeah. The Jews didn't have to serve in the Roman army. Huh? But they could not avoid paying taxes. It sounds like the government today, I don't care what you do, you're going to pay them taxes. Huh? They're going to take your house, 
They're going to take your car. They're going to take your business. But your taxes will be paid. <laughs> you might not have to serve in the army, but you're going to pay them taxes. Amen. Amen. Mm. Amen. Caesar Augustus decree went out in God's perfect time. Uh -huh. And according to God's perfect plan to bring his son into the world. I tell you, it was all in God's plan. Amen. David was born in Bethlehem. Therefore, it was necessary for the son of David to be born there as well. Amen. Mary yeah. and Joseph Amen. came to an end, a place of lodging. Mm. But because so many had come for the census, there was no room left. What kind of inn it was, we don't know. Imagine if it was in 2020, we don't know if it was a Motel 6, Red Roof Inn, a Comfort Inn, one of those places. But, but uh, we don't even know. It doesn't even mention an innkeeper. Mm -hmm. But somebody had to turn them away. Mm -hmm. Realize Bethlehem is no tourist center. So the inn probably left a lot to be designed. It must have been hard for Mary and Joseph. I can remember been several years back when we had a snowstorm. Yeah. An ice storm. And it shut Little Rock down. And, yeah. and power was out for yeah. seven days. And I was fortunate yeah. to get me a hotel. Yeah. And then the many were scrambling, trying to find the room. And found that there was no room in the end. Oh, huh? no uh, yes. Yeah. Seven days without power. But can you imagine Mary and Joseph's frustration? Uh -huh. Mary pregnant and ready. To deliver, only to find no room in the end to have to settle for a stable that probably offered a little comfort. I can see some of you women and said, Oh, I ain't going in there. Uh -huh. I'm gonna hold this. We're gonna have to go somewhere else. Uh -huh. I can see you looking at me. No sanitizer around here, nothing. I gotta do this right here. Mm. Mm. <laughs> God could have changed that. Mm. But he chose not to do so. Well, I tell you, God has a plan. God and Jesus was coming to his people again. God created us in the first place for right. fellowship huh? all right, all with right. us. And yet we yeah. seem to reject yeah. this fellowship. Right. Mm. Right. We yeah. see it over and over again in the Old Testament. Amen. We see it, my brothers and sisters, in the people of Israel who have been in bondage in Egypt. Yeah. God comes to them through Moses and miracles. Huh? To rescue them. He leads them through the desert. And there's a cloud during the day. And fire by night. God constantly letting them know that I am with you. Yeah. Well don't he let us know he's yeah. with us. He yeah. constantly lets us know that yeah. he is with us. But some still yeah. reject him. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. But, um, yes my brothers and sisters. They would rather not have a God who tells them what is for their own good. Like a rebellious child, they refuse to take his advice as what to do, what is best for them. At every turn, it seems they keep rejecting God's leadership in their lives. The rejection keeps happening through the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. They had no room for God in the nation or in their lives. Israel back then and the people today seem like they're one in the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many times would God have been rejected? How many times is God going to come to each and every one of us and, and tell us what he wants us to do and we turn a deaf ear? You see, God, God, after a while, he's going to get tired. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell you, if it had 
Yes, and then one of us instead of God. We would have left them to their own destruction long before God did. Yeah. 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 Yet still God has a plan yes, yeah. to send his son to come into come in flesh and bones so that he can die for their sins and take their place on the cross. Yes. Uh -huh. Who wouldn't serve a God that, like this? Sorry, that, Down out on Calvary, they <laughs> stretched him wide out on a tree between two thieves and he gave up the ghost for us. Yes, yes. Yes. Wretches yes. undone. Thank uh -huh. you, Jesus. Certainly, mm. we wouldn't reject someone who would bear the punishment for our sins, huh? Wasn't guilty of anything, but said, I will be deposit their sins on me. That we might go free. They did, and my brothers and sisters, many rejected, and many still rejecting to take it. Some rejected and won't come to church. Nor listen to what God is saying. Yeah. And some will come to church, but they won't receive nor obey what God is telling them yeah. that they might grow in Christ and be blessed. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. God already knew that Jesus would be rejected. Mm -hmm. If we look at Isaiah 53 and 3, he is despised and rejected of men. Yeah. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Yeah. The fact that there was no room for Christ yeah. was a sign that there was no room for him in this world. Yeah. He was rejected at his birth and he was rejected at his death. Yet Sarah, as a lamb, he gave his life. And he looked out at them and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Mm. Father, forgive them. We ought to hear those words when, when he come to us instructing us in our lives and we want to turn a deaf ear. We ought to hear Jesus See him on the cross saying, Father, yes. forgive them. Yes, yes. For they know not what they do. Yes. And it ought to make us want to line up <laughs> with what God is saying. Yes. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Now, is there any room yes. for Jesus yes. Yes. in 2020? Yes. Thanks to God, through the Holy Spirit, many of us have made room. Okay, yeah. <laughs> when we say yes to the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, uh, yes. when we accept the finished work of Christ as the atonement for our sins, we can be saved. Yes. Jesus enters into our life. But have we given him as much room as we should? Each one of us has to ask that question this morning. Have we given him as much room as we should? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Each of us must consider how much room we have for Jesus. How much room is in our mind for Jesus? There doesn't seem to be much room for Christ in the world we live in. And 2020. Oh, Jesus said, Come on to me. Yeah. All ye that lay. Yeah. And I heavy lay. Yeah. And I will give you rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Yeah. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Uh -huh. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Paul told Timothy to study 
to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but a rightly dividing the word of truth. Look around at your Sunday school. Look around at your Bible class. Look around at your women's mission. Look around at your brotherhood. The question, why am I not there? My brothers and sisters, I, I tell you, we really need to make more room for Jesus. Ain't God all right? The world tries to take Christ out of prison. The world says there are too many other things to do at Christmas. I, I gotta hit the malls, uh -huh. Park Plaza, uh -huh. McCain Mall, uh -huh. the Howling Mall. Uh -huh. I gotta get in uh -huh. while I can. Uh -huh. Gifts need to be picked up, uh -huh. wrapped and put up under the tree. They tell you, uh -huh. I gotta get ready. Uh -huh. But I heard uh -huh. that's gonna be a Christmas. Uh -huh. Jesus! 
Oh! 